Hello guys and welcome back to the LFC Transfer Room. Today we have another expert analysis. This time it is on Celta Vigo's Gabri Vega. We're joined by Ruli Barlow of Football España. He's going to give us the breakdown and in-depth analysis on the Celta Vigo midfielder. So, first of all, for people who don't know much about Gabri Vega, um, obviously, we're not all uh, Le uh, La Liga experts like you. Can you give us a bit of a rundown, you know, a bit of a, a quick glance of who he is, what he offers? Yeah, so we're talking about a 21-year-old kind of Spanish midfielder come attacker. I mean, he's had a few different roles, which I think is part of the, the wider and the larger discussion about Gabri Vega, which I'm sure we'll kind of come on to in a wee bit, but... But yeah, he came through the Celta system at Alfotesa, which is kind of uh, one of Spain's best academies, to be brutally honest. And he'd made a few appearances towards the end of last season. He was starting to, to get into the first team, starting to show glimpses of his quality. He, he definitely has plenty of technical ability. And then this season, he really had his breakout season. He really made his way into the first team. He really managed to nail down a place and become a major part of Celta Vigo's um offensive options alongside Iago Aspas, who Liverpool fans might be familiar with as well. But uh, but yeah, Gabri Vega, he came through and started playing kind of more or less off the front two or front one at times, but coming from a wide position, playing sort of in behind the strikers in recent games towards the end of Celta Vigo season, he's been moved a little bit back towards central midfield, but goals, the box, that is where he excels. That is where he really makes his money and he makes his teams kind of function he's got 11 goals i think it is this season and four assists which for a breakout campaign for a first campaign as a kind of starter for a first campaign as a legitimate part of the first team that is pretty impressive it has to be said obviously you know as you've mentioned there 11 goals four assists you know as a i think maybe from from someone who only watches the Premier League, I kind of originally thought he was more of, you know, a box-to-box -box type midfield. C can he play other roles apart from off the striker? Or is, you know, that mainly is that mainly his role? Or can he, you know, sit in as a six, you know, play an eight or even a box-to-box? -box? Yeah, it's that's kind of the big question that I have on my mind personally is because I've always kind of liked him closer to the box. I think that's where he does his damage. One of his key attributes is his kind of twitchiness in around the box. So he has that timing. He knows exactly where the defender is, where the weight of the defender is, exactly how to use it, and exactly how to kind of take the most benefit in inverted commas from the situations that he gets himself into, which is more or less kind of where he impresses me most. Can he play as an eight? Well, he has been for Celta for various games in this second part of the season. He can play deeper. He has the legs to get up and down. But if you're asking me, do I want him defending on the edge of his box? Not really. It's not something that I kind of want to see him doing. So personally, I would play him kind of closer to the strikers. When he came through the system at Celta as a kind of youngster, he would play either as kind of a, a lone striker or out wide kind of coming in from the flanks or preferably his main position was a 10 kind of playing with a, another forward. That's where he kind of made, yeah, made his name for himself coming through at the academy. Now, I think it does make sense for him to maybe... Uh, move back a little bit on the pitch and maybe play closer to kind of a 10 role. I think if you were playing a 4 2 3 1, he'd fit that kind of second midfielder or, or that kind of role in there. Playing a 4 3 3 is the interesting one because can he play it? Yes, he probably can. But in terms of maximizing his abilities, in terms of maximizing his talents, you do want to get him closer to the box and you want to make sure that he has the freedom to attack the box. And then on the flip side of that, that obviously means that you are kind of losing a little bit in defense and so and so you'd probably have to have two midfielders alongside him that don't mind sitting a little bit deeper and having the game in front of them he's obviously you know as you've mentioned only 21 years old um a breakthrough season how how impressed have you know you know other spanish sides been i think we've mainly been seeing them linked to, to premier league sides in newcastle and liverpool do you think there's any, you know, chance that maybe one of the big clubs in in Spain coming from, or or is he maybe not that rated in Spain yet? 
I don't think it's necessarily a case of whether he's rated or not by the big two. I mean, there has been links to the big two. I mean, yeah, Real Madrid and Barcelona, of course. Atleti, kind of in the earlier days before more Premier League sites were, were linked to him as well. But I think it's more a case of cost versus what you're getting. And Gabri Vega, are you getting a, a world-class midfielder that can go straight into Real Madrid or Barcelona's lineup? Probably not. I mean, you look at the midfields of, of both of those sites and they are pretty stacked, to be perfectly honest. So signing Gabri Vega for £40 million to then put him more or less net on the bench for those teams is probably not going to make too much sense for them. So I think it's a it's a case of, of quality. And when you have Real Madrid and Barcelona right now, the way they, they are financially, when they're investing big money, it's got to be for somebody that they think in terms of potential has the potential to be one of the best in the world. If they're very young, the likes of Eduardo Camavinga or Aurelien Tuamini, or it has to be somebody that's going to go straight into the starting lineup, as as you see with kind of Lewandowski and theoretically Rafinha before he moved to Barcelona. So I think in terms of just the costs, Celta Vigo, the president, Carlos Mourinho there is very stubborn. He won't accept a penny less than the 40 million euros buyout clause that he has, I don't think. And, and so I think you're going to see Premier League sites more or less exclusively linked with him for that reason, just because of the cost and the rules and the way that that would fit in at Real Madrid and Barcelona. But it's not really a reflection on his talent per se, more a reflection on where those sides are. And Liverpool obviously got another Celta Viga graduate um, in Stefan Pachetta, who, who, who lit the world on fire at Liverpool, probably arguably our best midfielder. Um, I know him, uh, Vega and Pachetta both come through at the academy together. Do you think that will help Liverpool, especially from Vega's point of view, seeing you know how well Pachetta come in and you know got a starting role at, at the young age of eighteen? Yeah, I mean, look, Vega has come through and is playing alongside and one of his kind of closest uh, teammates and to cl closest accomplices in that Celtic side is Iago Aspas, who obviously went to Liverpool, wasn't successful, and Iago Aspas has been saying. Look, I mean, if he can stay for an extra year, he should stay. There's no necessary rush for him to leave. And I, I think he will end up leaving because Carlos Mourinho, the president, is keen to sell him. But ultimately, I think a lot of the players that come through at Galicia are, to a certain extent, quite home bodies. And I think the fact that Bacetic is there, the fact that he has somebody that he, he's perhaps come through and knows from the academy, somebody from a similar culture, somebody who can help bed him in, that will make a world of difference for him, especially given the fact that Bashatich is younger. Um, and so he can more or less kind of pair up with him and, and ensure that he has somebody there. Because I think that is one of the more underrated aspects when you're dealing with young players and when you're dealing with players, especially moving countries, you've got to allow them some time to kind of bed in, allow them some time to really make make the themselves at home in a different country and a different culture. And then on the football pitch, that tends to translate. But at big clubs like Liverpool, like Manchester United, like uh, Manchester City, the pressure is so high that as soon as you go six months without really performing, already people are writing you off or already people are dismissing you. So I think having that kind of extra kind of comfort blanket in Bajatic could be key. And I think in general, Liverpool are, are one of the teams that manage that kind of stage better and, and try and take the pressure off those younger players a little bit better. But in general... I think with Vega, personally, I, like Aspas, would like to see him stay at Celta another season because we saw at stages during the second half of the season where he was dropped. We saw a kind of dip in form. Things that are only natural for the young player, especially one that has just broken through this season. And yeah, expecting him to be kind of a, an out-and-out -out starter for Liverpool, expecting him not to have ups and downs in the next kind of year or two, is it, just... Yeah, it's putting too much pressure on him. So I, I think if Liverpool do sign him, he should be kind of one of their first or second players off the bench rather than somebody that you should expect to necessarily light the world up in the Premier League right from the off, although he does have the talent to do so. Yeah, we've obviously you know seen certain Liverpool players given a lot of time. Um, Fabinho comes to mind, um, even Cody Gakpo, Luis Diaz. Do you think at the moment it's a, it would be a good career move for Vega, um, you know, working under Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool? Or do you think he might suit somewhere else better? I mean, listen, Jurgen Klopp's one of the best managers in the world. Jurgen Klopp has an uh, outstanding track record working with youngsters. So I think in terms of 
could he go somewhere else? Could he be better used somewhere else? I'd say it's it, you can't really say that because there's not too many other managers that have that track record, that have the ability to get as much out of his players as Jurgen Klopp does. So I think in terms of a career move, it'd be a fantastic move provided he can kind of stick that landing, provided he can adapt to Liverpool well. I think with Vega, with a player so young, and I mean, we say he's 21, but sometimes I think we get too hung up on ages. 21 for Vega is not that experienced given that he's just come through, that he's just kind of making his first steps in the professional football world. Whereas you get other players like Bacetic, who's 18, and by the time he's 21, is probably going to have 100 to 150 games under his belt. So I think you have to weigh that up. And would it be a good career move overall if he's going to move? I think there's probably a few places better that he could land than Liverpool. But if he is going to kind of take, take a little bit of time and take an extra season, then I think a club where he's going to play regularly would be handy. But do those clubs have the 40 million to pay for him and to make him kind of not necessarily the star of the show, but certainly a major part of their team? I'm not so sure. So in terms of the options that Vega will have on his table, I'd say Liverpool Liverpool are pretty up there. I mean, Newcastle have also been linked. Newcastle might be able to afford him more of a spot in their team than, than Liverpool might. But again, it's do you manage to stick that landing? Do you manage to have Eddie Howe given the time and does he manage to kind of adapt to, to life in the north of England? So, so yeah, th- those are kind of the factors that I'd weigh up, but I don't think Liverpool would be a bad move by any means. Going more more on to Vega's play style and stuff, what are some, if he was to move to Liverpool, what are some of the weaknesses that Liverpool need to, you know, maybe improve on and what are some of the strengths that, you know, Jürgen Klopp could play with towards, you know, implementing Vega into the first team? Yeah, in terms of weaknesses, I mean, it's many of the pitfalls that most young players suffer from. I mean, consistency, perhaps he's a little bit rash with the ball at times. He's maybe over keen to to play that final pass, to to make that run, whereas something that you learn with time and, and some players have it from the off, but most players at that age need to learn to kind of take a step, pausa, they call it in Spain, just take a little pause, recycle the ball at times. And so... There's that aspect of it. I think defensively, there's definitely much room for him to improve. I mean, as I say, he's not necessarily come through naturally being a defender. So that's something to to work out. And in Celta, at Celta, he's kind of got a nice kind of spot in the team where he is one of the main kind of attacking threats. And so the team will play to some of his strengths. And that includes getting into the box um, and, and getting goals. So he is in quite a nice role, but perhaps if you take him out of that role, he will need time to to adapt to become more versatile, especially if you're going to play him kind of off one of the flanks coming inside. Then positionally, he will need a lot more coaching, I think. But onto his kind of strengths, it's it's definitely it's around the box. I mean, that goal record is very good from midfield, especially for somebody that's not been starting throughout the season. The twitchiness that I spoke of, the ability to be in tight spaces to touch it out of his feet and get a shot off to appreciate just how much time he has on the ball before the defender gets that challenge. And his technique is very good. His his sort of technical ability to finish, to pass, and um, to play those through balls is good. But I think it's his awareness, his appreciation of space is the thing that will most um, be appreciated by Liverpool fans if he does arrive. Particularly if you look at kind of his highlights, one thing that you'll notice is that all of his best work kind of occurs within the width of the box. This is a guy that I think personally needs to be playing centrally to get the best out of him. So, so yeah, those are the things that you have to look out for. His ability to arrive from deep, to time that run in behind the defence as well. That line-breaking ability, and you saw it against Barcelona at the weekend just past in the final day of the season where Gabri Vega is the star of the show. Gabri Vega scores a brace to keep his side in La Liga. Yeah, that's where the kind of key attributes uh, kind of show themselves and become apparent. And we've also, you know, you've mentioned the price tag, um, this 40 million release clause. Um, for somebody who's, you know, it's, uh, you've, you've said it's his breakout season, his first real season in tough life football. It, you know, it's it's kind of a weird figure to, for me personally. You know, it's he's, he's a young player, it's 40 million. Maybe it's just you know generation we've grew up in. Forty million seems like it's cheap. <laughs> um, do you think you know maybe if he didn't have that release clause, they would be 
asking for more? And also, do you think he is worth that 40 million? Long term, I think he'll be worth that 40 million. I think if you look at the comparisons in the markets, then then yeah, Gabby Vega does hold up to some of those more talented midfielders that, that are going the younger ones that are on the market. 40 million for me seems more or less about the right price now in terms of the right price and what people will pay those are two vastly different sums of figures i mean you see some of the players that especially kind of come out of portugal and and the very large fees that um that have been kind of attached to to younger players and even downward new nunez for example i mean depending on kind of your reputation and the players that you've sold in the past you can kind of inflate these figures depending on agents there's a lot of factors that go into these fees i think 40 million is a kind of a fair price if he was on the if he was without a release clause then maybe he would go for a little bit more but but yeah this all happened very suddenly as we say for first season i again i i think it's um very early to tell exactly what he's going to be and what his final form will be to to put it in that sense but but yeah i think for a first season 40 million is it's on the the upper end of what you'd want to be paying but in terms of the market i think there's no doubt that you could have gone for more just for context this is a guy that was due to kind of renew his contract or wanted to renew his contract at celta i believe in about kind of february march or certainly that was some of the the news that was being leaked and he sacked his agent he's been on the lookout for a new agent i think it's pini zahavi is going to be going to be the one that's managing this transfer and that gives you an idea of the fact that he's very much come into this elite world of football so to speak in this elite kind of transfer business quite late on it's only kind of march april um may where this has kind of become a possibility and become something that almost seems likely to happen finally you know you, we've uh, over the years we've seen you know spanish uh, la liga players work in the premier league and you know vice versa and on the other end of the scale, we've seen players like Iago Aspas at Liverpool who, you know, couldn't hit a barn door, but he's come to La Liga and he's one of the best strikers there. It's always, you can never really answer it, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Um, do you think, <laughs> do you think Gabri Vega would suit the Premier League? Do you think his skill set would, you know, I'm not expecting him to go in and be the best midfielder, but do you think he will be able to adapt to life in the Premier League? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's almost tricky because i mean we've come from a generation with that kind of 2008 to 2012 run of spanish players where the quality across the league and the quality across the academies was so high that you could more or less take any player that was doing it in la liga as one at one of the top or one of the better teams fit them into the premier league and they would become one of the best players i mean i'm thinking of the likes of juan mata david silva do i think he's of that level yet no i mean he is one of the better young talents in Spain. This season he's been especially impressive. Some people are having him as their breakout player of the season, which shows you just how good he's been. In terms of how he adapts to the Premier League stylistically, I think Gabri Vega's style is not one that's slower by any means. It's not one that needs time on the ball. He's physically looks like he can hold up to the rigors of the premier league i mean he's not small he has enough of a physique about him he's only going to get stronger he has the ability to cover ground as well so i think in terms of style i think it could be a good fit i think he should have the ability technically and physically to be able to adapt to the premier league obviously as we've spoken about there's that uh kind of phase of adaptation that phase of bedding in which is going to be important but one of the things that always stands out to me in terms of the comparison between La Liga and the Premier League, especially with attacking players. La Liga is not kind of all the technical passing league that it's had the reputation of for the last kind of 10, 15 years. It is a physical, physical league these days where a lot of teams, especially in that lower half of the table, will sit in, they will put eight, nine men behind the ball, ask you to break them down, and they will not think twice about kind of finalizing you to do so. So Gabri Vega in the Premier League is likely to be playing in a much more up and down game, a much more kind of spacious game in a certain sense. And I think knowing his runs, knowing the ability he has to kind of work out where to be, work out where the goals are going to come from and where the ball should go, I think there's definitely scope to say that Gabri Vega would fit the Premier League well and would kind of thrive in that extra space, so to speak. 
Thank you very much to Ruri Barlow for sitting down with us and giving us his expert analysis on Gabri Vega. Ruri's Twitter will be in the description, so make sure you go down there, give him a follow to get all your things Spanish and La Liga related. It's uh, Ruri Barlow. Um, I'm the editor of Football Spain. You can find kind of my work on there as well as uh, other places, La Liga Lowdown as well. I also write for it and, and various other publications. But yeah, at Ruri Barlow on Twitter is where you'll you'll find some of my musings, correct and incorrect. If you think Gabri Vega would be a good addition to Liverpool, leave a comment below. Also, leave a like on the video. It helps us out. And if you aren't already, please subscribe and turn that bell notification on. We are closing in on 10,000 subscribers. Well, I've been Charlie. This has been the LFC Transfer Room and thank you for watching.